Hi everyone, my name is Américo Cunha. In this video, you have one of my webinars in process modeling. We will be discussing about business process model annotation, also known as BPMN. Here we cover three points. One, process modeling review. We start with a short review of business process modeling. Then we talk about the major difference between flowchart technique and the PPMN technique. Then I present a real example, a shipment process of a hardware retailer. The last section, we have, we come back to the case study we worked on on the flowchart webinar. But now we'll be converting the flowchart map into a BPMM map. You have the video time for each section, so you can go direct to the session that you want. Let's get started. It's working. Okay, so why do we need business process? In the first webinar, we talk ab about this diagram. I try to show to you that we have a he real work procedure, a real work flow of work or workflow. Have procedures, real work. We take that real work, that real workflow, and represent. And from there, using business process map, we can understand the sequence of work. So when we have a, a business pro a process map, we can understand how things are being done, executed, even the things that we cannot see. Then I, I told you that the maps are can be used for two main things. One thing is to configure it, to develop information systems. That one way of mapping process and handing off the process to someone, uh, IT, analy uh, IT analyst, a system analyst. Uh, in the mapping, we are looking for understanding, analyzing, managing, and improving the work procedures. Then when you move to the system, the idea is to develop, to automate some tasks and create a support management or support control system. And then we move the activities step to a system. And then uh, once you have that system with activity, that system will be distributed in uh, the activities, the task to several workstations and the workstation will be doing the work. So uh, that is the idea of the, 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 the context in which we have to do the business process modeling. Now the questions. Where flow charting technique is more suitable? Where is the BPMN technique more suitable? And so usually flow chart is a very simple notation, easy to understand. So you can share that with several people and even people that are not technical, don't understand business process modeling. And we, uh, and that's why we can use is an intuitive uh, uh, notation. It's not something very uh, complicated. And the 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 BPMN, the BPMN is a is a notation symbols that are more uh, I would say have more details about the work procedure about the business roles uh, that are that the worker is following to develop the work so bpmn has more details is more structured so you are forced to show more things that you usually show in a, a in a flow chart technique usually when i worked in uh, as a business analyst, I use flow charting when I'm dealing with the end user or the stakeholders that are not technical in IT. 
And then I transfer the information, so it's easy to communicate with them using flowchart. But when I have to prepare a documentation and to IT professionals, I uh, I usually I transfer, I translate that diagram into a BPMN diagram and use and send that to the uh, IT uh, people. So flowcharting and BPMN, what are the basic difference? That's very basic. There are much more than that. But what are the basic difference between flowchart and BPMN? Starting with the symbols, okay? Flowcharting, we have few symbols. We have the flow, okay? We have the activity, we have the decision control, the terminator, maybe plus two symbols that is the connector, and the upside down tri triangle when we talk about storage and queues. EPMN has more than 100 symbols, okay? Represent different features, events, control flows of uh, the real world. So there is several symbols. I'm just showing here what we called the core symbols. So we have the flow, Activity that in a flowchart is a rectangle. Here in the PPMN is a, a rounded corner rectangle. We have the uh, control the, the control flow elements that in the flowchart we call diamonds or decision control. Here we call the diamond as a gateway. So gateway in, in BBMN, here we call decision control and diamond and flowchart. And event, we can have a start event and event or intermediate event and several order, several symbols. Every time that we have a symbol inside the, the shape, it means that that symbol is representing a certain workflow feature. Uh, what is BPMN? How to, to show uh, things on BPMN? I'll be going direct to some. Here we have, so we, we have nodes, N1, N2, N3, N4, N5. So each element we call nodes, each element here, and we have edge or the arrows. So we have basically two elements, the nodes and the edge, the nodes and the edge, the nodes and the edge. So the edge show the flow direction, the, the nodes event, usually represented by circles, like N1 and N7. N1 is a initial event and N7 is a final event. Activity represented by rectangles with rounded edge, so here, any the node N2, we have analyze order. N4, we have simple check. I forgot what is this, but anyway, it's a... And we have the gateways that are represented by diamonds. And the gateway is the element that will, sh will demonstrate how the flow of work will be done after our activity. Depend on the outcome of the activity, how, what we have to do Next, so depending on the outcome or analyze order, what should be done next? One important feature of the PPMN uh, diagram that in activities we can we can just have one input and one output. That means that activities in the nodes, uh, activities other than gateways like uh, events and uh, activities, we can have just one input and one output. So. Every time that we 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 go out uh, after an activity and have to join with another activity, we we must use gateways to do that join. Okay, so th those is the, the first element. Let's let's go here. Usually in BPMN, you use a type of uh, diagram called swim lane. What is swim lane? In a diagram, in which we have lanes okay lanes each lanes you put the executor here the 
person that is executing, the actor that is executing the process, and then we put all the activities that that person here is executing, so the executor, we put inside the lane. We have here receive order, then we have a, a that way. That gateway can, can send the flow to a, a path in which you have to send invoice and receive payment. And then we have uh, our ship products and then active. So what are the objects what it call, that we call in BPMN called flow objects? We have the event. The event is represented by a circle and it's something that happens during the course of a business process. The events can trigger or be the result of, uh, of an activity. Here, specifically, we have the start event, intermediate event, that's two line, double line here, and end event, that uh, bold line, black line here. Activity is represented by round the corner rectangle. It's like uh, in the flowchart, we use rectangles. Here we use we use round corner rectangles and the gateways. The gateways use the diamond shape and it's used to demonstrate. It means that if from one node you have to diverge through several activities, or you can show the uh, convergence from several nodes to one node. So we here we have for basic gateways and have this tutorial and they have a documentation that is a exclusive or is a diamond with a X in the middle. And the end is a diamond with a plus. Okay. First situation. Let's suppose that we are in a, in a process, a fulfillment process, in which the, 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 the customer has to select the payment method. So uh, there is an activity in which the customer will be selecting the payment, uh, select the payment, and goes to a diamond. Here is a OR, inclusive OR. In that case, we have three possibilities. The client can use credit card, pay with credit card, the, the, the clients can use cash, pay with cash, or uh, the clients uh, can pay with both. So in or, we have three possibilities, either or or both. So let's, let's see the first possibility. The first possibility is if the client select credit card. So it goes from here to the diamond and then to the credit card. So that is the, the first possibility. The second possibility, if it's the client decide to pay using cash, it so goes here, go to the diamond, the gateway, and then uh, pay cash. Or you can have both. Let's suppose that the client wants to split uh, the payment, pay a certain amount in with the credit card and a certain amount with cash. So here the process will be following both paths after select pay. After select pay, the process we have to follow. So the or inclusive is, is used when a situation in the process in which we need to represent uh, a gateway that after a task, we may have one possibility, the other possibility or both possibilities. In the exclusive OR or XOR, we have just two possibilities. We cannot have both situations. Let's suppose that in the same example that we uh, uh, showed uh, before, it's a payment. But now the store just allowed the use of one payment method. Okay, just one payment method is allowed. And in that case, it means that we go for pay with credit card or with cash. We cannot do both at the same time. Okay. So here we have, or we may have what you call and the parallel workflow. In the situation of the book uh, paid uh, in, the, in the, that online store that we uh, saw in the first webinar, 
There we have a book paid. Then what? There are two activities that must be done after the book is paid. We can ship the book. Uh, we have to ship the book, so that order goes to the warehouse and the warehouse pick and pack and ship the book. And and at the same time, I invoice via email is sent to the customer. In that case, the representation of that work situation, we must use a diamond. And that shows that this that is true activity that will happen after the first activity in this case so we have these three types of gateways we have more if you go to the uh, bpmn in the omg.org and go there there they have uml and other uh, notations but go there to the bpmn section you can have you can access the documents and it, you see that we have several other types of gateways. Okay, I will be explaining this, this shipping process of a hardware retailer uh, using. So here you can see swim lane diagram. You see you here you have one executor that is the logistic manager. You have another executor that is the clerk, the warehouse worker. So everything that happens inside this that lane here is done by the manager. Everything that is done here, that second lane, is done by the clerk. And here on the bottom, everything that is done by the warehouse work is shown in the in the third lane. So that's why we call this swim lane diagram. Okay, you have a pool in which we have uh, the department, the group, the, the group of work. And here, so let, let's understand the process and see how the process works. So we have here the clerk at the end of some process has some goods to be shipped uh, to a customer. And that's the start the process. Right away, we have uh, a gateway, okay? a gateway. That gateway, it means that, what does it mean that gateway here? It means that when the, we have the goods to be shipped, two things must happen. Two things must happen. First, the uh, hardware retailer should prepare do some work here and at the simultaneously and the warehouse work should do some activities package uh, the goods for instance so here we have a we have an example of gateway and after decide if the, the material will be shipped using normal post or special shipment, so a special shipment, there is another gateway. Another gateway, and here we may have a special carrier or a normal post. Or sometimes the client may say, okay, some goods I want to be sent by a normal post, another part of my uh, order I want to be uh, sent by uh, a special carrier. So that, that's we have here inclusive or. That means that you can go either one path or to the other path or can have both. After that, we may have another inclusive or. I don't know why the person here put two different symbols to say the same, the same thing. If you have to fill a post label that that is always you go here that is always here and that you go always there or if you go and have a different different need a, some kind of extra insurance so sometimes you go 
to extend sure, but you may always go to that direction. But sometimes you have to contract a extend sure. So at the end, you combine the flows, the workflows, and then we have to com combine with request codes from carriers, assign if it's special carrier, carrier and prepare work. Let's like say if they are using here, this is Canada Post, normal post, Canada Post, and here maybe is FedEx, okay, or some kind of courier service that goes to the other direction. And here we, again, we close every time that we finish, we close, we merge, we join the lines into a gateway. Then those information are uh, shared with the uh, warehouse. And here we have an end, closing that end. So the warehouse will be doing the work, preparing the package, okay? Preparing the package and hold until he receives all the information. Sometimes the information arrives first, sometimes the package is prepared first, and then add the paperwork to the package and send that to the ship area. And then you have the endpoint and event for the process. So that is basically what is a, a use of BPMN. So again, when you talk about flow charting, we talk that we have basic, very few symbols to represent the workflow. So we have to put a lot of information. We have to adjust how, and sometimes there is some abstractions that we don't show internally in the in the diagram. And so that's that's uh, sometimes when you send that kind of uh, of a diagram to IT people, they they will be asking several. Okay, but here, can you do both or can you do just one? And after that, what is the rule after the two activities? I have to wait for the other activity, or I can push that activity forward without waiting the the the, the, the other activity. So this is not very suitable for IT. In IT, you have to have the events the gateways, the flows, better represented, okay? Besides those in BPMN, you have three types of lines. If the line is with an arrow, an edge, it means that is an information flow. If it's a continuous line, is a uh, the normal flow, The I, I don't know how to say, but it, it's the normal situation. But as well, in BPMN, we have comments, instructions that we go and you can put outside the flow. That element here is just a comment, okay? So when go special carry, I can just pull a line and put a, a comment. That's our instructions. Uh, but actually, if you have sometimes in the middle, let's create something here. Let's create something here. If you have a, a, a dotted line here, okay? It means that is a information flow from G, this step request code from carriers to fill in a post label. But anyway, that's more complicated. There is other symbols. I don't want to go through the 100 symbols. First, because I don't know, okay? I don't know the 100 symbols. And second, because it would be very complicated too. Let's come back. Now we start the case two. So that is the, the, the same case. We worked last example. I don't go to, to that same description, but it's a customer of a computer uh, company calling in to order a computer and then the customer may go online or call the call center and then from the online or the call center the customer so the, the a customer order is issued then the, that order goes to the assembling department first 
by uh, goes to the inventory team that check the stock of all parts required to, to assemble the computer. Then we move to the third th the assembly line when they pick the parts and put the parts in a box and then that box is moved to the uh, assembly area where the technicians assemble the computer parts and then they do a quick test. Then the, the step six, they go to a quality assur assurance stage in which the techniques will be conducting visual tests, full system tests to see if the, uh, the, the computer is okay. Then after the, the, the quality stage, the computer is, the, the, the computer uh, is sent to the packing and shipment area uh, with the accessories, peripherals, manuals are packed, labeled, and shipped to the customer. So that is the basic case, filter fulfillment process that we started work, work on last, last week. And now what I'll be doing with you is just, so last week we did this first, the, the initial step. Let's do now the same process using using BPMN or business process model annotation symbols that we uh, showed here. So basically let's do and let's translate the each symbol on the flowchart to a symbol in BPMN. Okay. Because we don't have PowerPoint is not the better software to map BPMN. Actually, it's the worst software or the software like MES Visual. But because PowerPoint is, is, doesn't have the, the symbols here, what I do, I create a slide with the basic symbols. And I, what I'll be doing is just the selecting the symbol, control C, copying and pasting, and control V, and bring this back to, to, to our uh, diagram here. So here we have a term terminator in the uh, flowchart. So let's start. So the first is a control C and control V, and we have here the first. No, so the start here, we have a event, a start event. Let's go now and put an activity. Now the activity is a, a activity. Don't go up there. It's different from the uh, flow chart because it's round corn rectangle. And I'll be copying what's written inside inside the activity customer because it's the same thing customers choose how to buy okay and the arrow is the same arrow it's closed because i need space and now we have a, a very and that's the most difficult part because you have to translate a decision control in which we don't know exactly the behavior we have to interpret and understand the behavior. So here, uh, the behavior is the customer can call or use the web. The customer cannot do the both at the same time. They okay? cannot do both at the same time. So here we need to go here and take a X or symbol control C control. Let pop and come here and paste okay so we have here through situ two situations that are two process path that are mutually exclusive they cannot be done at the same time okay so and now I can add another uh, so add add another activity round corner. If I go here, 
I go up the what is inside because the activities we here present the same way. And I have another here. Another control co op doing I cannot be so low because I have to okay paste here issue order yo okay and we have the edge connecting the arrows also lead. Okay, and now we have another diamond. We we have to translate that diamond into a gateway. What do you think here? That the act here, the work procedure is to check the information on the customer order and verify if the information is okay or not okay what do you think would be the gateway for this example yes exclusive or again why because you cannot have yes and no at the same time or you have yes or you have no okay you cannot say yes and no at the same time so and here again we have uh, i'll be control c Control V and bring this here. I will be doing again. Okay. And here, uh, the no comes back to the CSR. So you can go here and the no goes there. Just adjust that because I, ha I have to write some. You see, so here we have two arrows, and if the information is if the information is okay, so you can you can uh, type here info okay info okay big info okay, and we can have info not okay if you can see here we have much more detail than here in that case is very clear the, the IT analyst will not have doubt that those are ex exclusive decisions they cannot be done at the same time but maybe at the beginning here if he doesn't know exactly, he may say, okay, but they can call and use in the web at the same time or not. So that's, and he is very clear. No, no, no. They cannot do both at the same time. They have to do one, either or, or not both. Okay. Let's do the second, the second sequence here second path so we have the customer the customer op opens the website okay then the customer control c control v the customer select computer customer select computer Customer confirm order. Control C. I'm using Control V. Every time that you see a, uh, something appearing in your computer, uh, customer confirm order. Okay. And here I'll be using again. Uh, BPMN and uh, the arrows. Okay. And again, here we have info, check info, the same we did before. As we did before, is the same thing. We may have 
we can have yes or no, either yes or no, but you cannot have both at the same time. And so you come back here, so to represent that, uh, and may have a situation in, in which you go here, or we can have, I can copy from the, the top, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, Info OK, come here, and Info Not OK, Info Not OK, the, the process is sent back to the screen in which the customer is selecting the order. OK, now we have the, the next step would be the next step would be uh, send order to, to uh, inventory management. Okay. As I told you, the situation here, if you follow a flowchart, we don't do that, okay? We put this here and bring the other. So, and here and then continue the flow to uh, to the other steps. Okay, uh, but this cannot be done. This cannot be done in. A, this is wrong in BPMN. We cannot have two ads arriving in on one activity. We cannot have that. Okay, it, it, it's, it's, it's wrong. So in that case, because here we have to say, we have to say to the system that, uh, so let's copy and paste, because we open with an end, that means that the order will flow, the customer will use the upper path, or the bottom path. So and so here the system cannot go uh, in a cannot go in a in a in another uh, way. So we need to do so. That is the correct way. And we'll be demonstrating here that the flow of the, the customer order can come through the upper, draw something on the top here, can come through the top path or what I mean, or come to the top path, path or through the lower path. Cannot be both at the same time. So that symbol here for an IT analyst, very, very important when they are designing the system to understand where the customer order is coming from. Okay? And that is the situation. Okay, so that is, so we took that flow chart here on the top, and we represent the same workflow using BPMN symbols on the bottom. You see, they are kind of, I say kind of with I don't like to word, use that word, but it's kind of similar. They are not, they are different because we have much more details in the B, E, M, N business process model and notation on the BPMN diagram. We have much more. Why? Because here we are not 
we are not defining if it's a or exclusive or or a and uh, control that should be implemented here. And here it's very clear that is a ex exclusive or. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Please send your comments and suggestions in the comment area below. I will be pleased to answer all of them. Don't forget to subscribe. All the best. Thanks for watching.